the beginning anyway. Here's that iconic sound that you've seen in many videos. And the entrance, the wicked way. And it's raining. <laughs> Isn't it welcome? But to be honest, being in the city is stressful. And I'm actually glad to be out of the city at least. <laughs> Looking up at the hills, forests. Got our hiker chic. Let's go. Good. So already I didn't even properly look at the map at the entrance. <laughs> Luckily there's already a marker. <laughs> oh there's another one. Flip low loads of way markers. For Egypt's like me. <sighs> yeah, I was feeling anxious in the city, making decisions, having to figure things out, getting hungry and for queues for breakfasts and things. So I'm glad that I can feel, I'll feel myself starting to unwind, loosen off. There's a wee wood pigeon and I can smell the leaves. We just come out of Marty Park there and this is the road section along the motorway. So there's the sign where first road section of the trail. At least the rain stopped so on and off like you, I think we'll probably end up not even putting on waterproof jackets. Just letting the rain come and go, get a bit wet, get a bit dry. This is all very well signposted throughout Marley Park, like you couldn't go wrong. There was a sign for the Wicklow Way at every potential junction. So this is us coming off the, the road section, which is bringing us into Kilmashogue. So basically Marley Park's a start, that wee road section at the motorway, and then on this road to Kilmashogue. On the road to Kilmashogue, not going to kill anyone, I know you're talking about. Butterflies, little sprites of summer, and the sun is actually shining, which, as much as it may not last, long may I live. So, um, there was a busy road section, but it had a pavement motorway. Um, this is definitely the Wicklow way, but it is a road section going uphill. But I'm hoping this is one of those boreens where uh, it'll be very, very lightly trafficked. Um, there's already people running on it and walking on it. Oh, coffee shop open to the public. Somebody needs a pee. Last actual toilet possibly before <laughs> the next five days. But it looks actually gorgeous looking up at Kilmer Show Woods. So actually I'm switching this out to this hat. But I'm really chuffed that I modified this and then put in wee rivets in the inner lining. And then to put on some bungee and a wee toggle, spring toggle. Because that sun when it comes out is strong and we did not expect this at all. So I'm actually delighted that I have this ridiculous looking hat. <laughs> Just going to do the trick, keep the sun off my neck as well, which is a big thing. And it's easy to have a baseball cap on and where it's shining in front of you and then you turn a corner and all of a sudden the sun's at the back of your head and you're getting no protection whatsoever. So we've been very slow starting off. We were in the city, left our accommodation, to get breakfast and then there was queues and I think there was a f hurling football match, the All-Ireland Finals, so everywhere was bunged to the rafters and it took ages just trying to figure that out and getting served and all and then, then whenever you need to pee and then going in and getting a coffee from somewhere to justify peeing and all these things. <laughs> so slow start. It's like half past one now. So I imagine we're going to be walking for like the next eight hours, thereabouts. Seven or eight hours maybe. We'll see. We'll see where we get to and then just wing it. So it is actually pretty steep coming up this week, country road to get the Kilmer Show Goods. And I don't even know how far up it is. I've been 
I was doing lots and lots of research before I came, but now I've got here, I'm just like so dying to be on the trail. But yeah, it's pretty pretty steep. Go on. Marty Park lured us. <laughs> False sense of security. But beautiful. While a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood, I got a one little fat my mom got scared and said, You're moving with your Eddie and Uncle to Bel Air. Do, 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 do. So yes, we're in Kilmashog for us now. Uh, definitely, that was a steep uphill on that road. <coughs> but don't feel bad. It was like, it was a lovely road. And I imagine that's what the roads will be like along the Wicklow Way. But no, glad to be in the forest. And hopefully because we've done so much incline there, there's not going to be too much in here. Here's hoping. Lovely views there. Oh, look at that. Right over Dublin. In Dublin Bay. The walk up into Kilmashog was not as nice and flat and level <laughs> as I'd hoped. <laughs> it's been lots of incline. <sighs> but it's still nice. And quite a few people on the trail too. Which, other than the Mourns in the north, like a lot of places aren't that populated so it's actually unusual seeing people on a trail <laughs> oh yeah this is a shout out to Raghu who we met walking up here um, he was chatting asking us about the Wicklow way probably thinks we're mad he's having a day walk around Kilmashog and told him where we were hoping to camp tonight He's like, that's very far. I was like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Wish you well, Raghu. Nice chatting to you. Saw so first deer off the trail. So nice. That's one of the things I was actually looking forward to. There's not many areas that we walk that um, there's deer. It's lovely. Like we looks like we follow deer. Totally unperturbed. Wagging its tail. Lovely. And just had a raven there as well. All the nature's happening. Oh, there it is. Raven flying over to the fairy castle. Which we didn't bother going up. Um, there's obviously no desire in me to go up extra incline for the views were already good enough as they were. going through some of the forestry, newly planted forestry. It's like a Sitka spruce car wash, as uh, Christina described the experience. Um, now we're like going through these sections of fern. It's like I've never really been in areas where ticks were an issue. So kind of more cautious about it than ever before and hoping not to be too overly cautious either, but 
we did. Bought a tech card anyway, at least, and uh, we'll just keep an eye and make sure there's no ticks. Uh, but it's still very pretty, actually, even though it's Sitka spruce, and they shouldn't be planting Sitka spruce, Sitka spruce, but it is, it's pretty. This is uh, overgrown, let's say. I've um, got my hands right up in the air. <laughs> Like, I just don't care. <laughs> just doing all this here. <laughs> Fern's the height of my head. Gonna be doing fern tech, tech checks. Full body tech. There's no way I'm gonna prevent any <laughs> anything embedding itself on me right now. Head height ferns and they work no way. <laughs> there you go, so we've just come out of the Kilmashog area and we've just got onto the little country road section. And actually that area is part of the Dublin Mountain Way as well, so there's a, a spot where you need to make a decision and make sure you don't start <laughs> following a different way altogether. So look away this way. Walk like an Egyptian. Walk like an Egyptian. Love that sound of sheep just coming off Kilmashog here in the bang. It's nice coming into Wee Valley, but just hearing the sound of the countryside. It's lovely. Get my first snacks into me on the trail. I'm nuts. So we've just finished a quite a sizable road section, quite bigger than expected. Um, but it was nice, reminding me of the Glenshesk Valley, Valley Castle, Glens of Anton. Um, but we're now we came, came off the road where there was a fair bit of traffic, but there are signs up indicating you know where there are people walking. Um, some people were considered actually, so that was nice. So I didn't feel it any in any way not safe in that road that was busier, but now we went onto this tiny wee road which was you knew there was not going to be any traffic there. So we're making our way. But it's now I've been walking for about three hours, it's now four twenty. Um earlier on we were basking in what seemed like gorgeous weather. It was really nice. Um the clouds have come in a bit. Um still warm, there's a bit of a breeze has picked up. Um so yeah, we're sort of switching, figuring out what layers are going to work for this wee bit, for now anyway. I've gone for the really lightweight, thin running top, just uh, to take a wee bit of the wind <coughs> out of the equation. Ah, right. No idea where we're going to get to, how far we're going to get, and when we'll get there and all that. Um, right now, I think water is important, and the last water we saw there, I didn't feel comfortable. It like, you know, farmer's land, I don't want to be giving walkers a bad reputation, uh, climbing over walls and fences to get water. So hopefully this tributary here is accessible. We'll find out. I was glad to have heard that water trickling and trusted it enough to, well, I'd say trusted it, using our water filters, but it's literally just this. <clears throat> Mini. realities of trail life. <laughs> you appreciate water when you get it. Having that sea knock bag where you can open a whole top of it up and catch all of those drips at one time, that makes a difference. And the Sawyer squeeze. I was just saying to Christina like the difference between the squeeze and the mini when I had the mini is like it's a much more pleasant experience basically. So I've got my quick low way guide. This is great, the map, and this is brilliant actually. I think I'm just going to keep this out. This is uh, Glen Cullen Forest. So, Glen Cullen River, so we saw the water there, but I didn't feel good about going on crossing fences and going into farmer's land to get the water, even though it looked very inviting. Um, so, we are now going through Glen Cullen Forest, and this wee water source was halfway up this first incline. Will we make it to Parish Court? Who knows? Who knows? But there's the Glen Cree River as well, which is another possibility. 
Just heard a buzzard there too, that was nice, down the valley. Kind of waving. Mm -hmm. Feeling better, got water. Ishka. Oh, so, I think we've got just past the highest point in Glen Cullen Forest. Um, load of switchbacks. It is kind of hard going. Uh, definitely a long pounder. I actually used my walking poles. I think it's probably since being about 23 years old, I think it's the longest I've actually had walking poles in my hands. And I do, yeah, I feel like, I think Stephen J. Reed, Stephen Reed's video, he, I talked about walking poles and he actually really explained stuff that I did know that I would tell people in the shop that I work in, tips, you know, about walking poles. But uh, there's something a wee bit extra about what he was saying. And I'm like, yes. But also, uh, I remember when I was selling walking poles when I was like 22 years old and I said, from my own experience, it was a feeling that even if they weren't doing all of this other mad great stuff that they're meant to do, at least to take your your mind off your legs if they're hurting. But no, I think for the most part, I'm actually using them. Just a bit annoyed. I don't. I didn't bring a water bottle pouch from a shoulder strap. And this pouch here on the nature hike is great for my phone and great for this wee Osmo, um, but um, not for this size of water bottle. So. And it means if I then want to drink water, I need to take my poles off, get one with all that rigmarole. So, but all good. Um, glad with the progress we're making. And the weather again has stayed off. There's wee threats of potential rain, a few drips, but nothing has come out of it. And yeah, I'm very, very grateful for that. Uh, it'd be amazing if we were able to get the destination set up to camp um, without um, any rain on us. Just some pitter patter through the night would be lovely. I think we're sort of coming out of Glen Cullen Forest now and in and uh, towards Kirtlestown Wood. But this is a lovely wee section. It's oh, really nice. Look at that. Yeah. All those contours are actually downhill, not uphill. <laughs> Amazing. So we're actually making our way down through Kirtlestown Wood around the side of it, and luckily I realised the contours meant downhill, not uphill. <laughs> it's quite an interesting terrain. Like big granite blocks or something. But it was actually lovely views have opened up and uh, we we're looking out over Bray Head and and then Sugarloaf I think it's called appeared. Very distinctive looking peak. Really really nice. Uh, but this is cool. Yeah lovely trail. Gorgeous. <laughs> this trail's cool. Reminds me a wee bit of uh, Donard Forest. Look at those mushies. Well, must be a wax cap. Some sort of wax cap. Pretty uh, yeah, hard underfoot, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm still glad I'm wearing trail shoes, and that's definitely f one thing I'm very glad of this trail. At least so far anyway, I haven't had any wet days, but, but even in the kind of rougher sections or things where your ankle's kind of all over the place, I'm still glad I'm wearing really light, breathable trail shoes. Absolutely. Ooh, the views open up over what I think is a Glen Cree Valley. Wow, amazing. Would you look at that? Lovely. Oh, that's the end of the blocks. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Try and not to be self conscious. Flowers, knapweed, 
fluffy thistle. Yeah, we both really loved, uh, especially that last section, Curtis Town Wood, um, after we left Glen Cullen Forest, which was still nice enough, but that other, just once you leave Glen Cullen Forest, um, into that section, down coming down into the valley, is really nice, really nice. And uh, seeing, uh, I think, well, I think I can actually see juice. Um, I don't know, assuming then maybe what might be Knockery Hill and possibly the top of where Parish Court is, Parish Court Waterfall, and the Dargle River. But not 100%, but, but it's gorgeous. That's all Karen. The rain hasn't come on. Um, we're both in good form. Um, still no idea where we're going to get to. I think we'll get down into the valley here, uh, have a wee break, maybe get some food and then see if we're going to move on somewhere else or not. But yeah. All good spirits, enjoying it. Loving it. So we've made it at least to Knockree, where the hostel that is not open is. Apparently it's opening in August. I think we'll head over Knockree Hill and push on. Hello! Yabber. Can I go on YouTube? Food points. Job well done. He, he saw off the invaders. All those pesky hikers. Knockery, Knockery Hostel, but I took what I thought was a, on the trail, but was not. I was leaving into private, private property. <laughs> Ooh, and then when you're tired and your legs are a bit achy, having to go up a hill, especially a bit of a hill, when you've made a detour, is a kick in the bollocks. <laughs> I was to say, okay, this is the tr <laughs> turn meant to take. So this takes us round, so you don't need to go up and over Knockery Hill, but it takes you just around the contours. So hopefully there's not too much incline. Definitely feeling it. Weather will stop at the Glen Cree Valley or whatever you call it. Um, or push on, I don't know. But definitely feeling it in the feet and the legs. So we kind of recognise this bit from one of the most recent people to put up a video for the Wicklow Way. Which I think is ambling something, ambling trails. But yeah, I enjoyed his videos and subscribed to him recently. Uh, but he did uh, particularly point out here that there was that where the Wicklow Way goes off to the right, you could easily, easily miss it. <laughs> so we're aware, and thank you for providing that information. That's helpful. Christina's gone crazy. Oh, them chickens. Um, I also like, we were lucky because I actually was expecting to possibly to have to walk around Marty Park because of, you know, gigs going on and stuff. Actually, we're lucky enough that we didn't. <laughs> we were pretty lucky, actually. We've been lucky with the weather and we've been lucky that we got to actually walk through Marty Park, which is a lovely park, actually. It was really nice. So we've done really well. Maybe that means tomorrow is going to be a wet out, stormy, <laughs> who knows. But at least, I think just especially to start a trail and being our first kind of big long distance trail, it's nice that the gods have taken it easy on us today. <laughs> just to break us in gently. Would you take a photo of me with this in the background? I think this is the wee secret turn off, the wee hidden one. Coming up. Yes, it is. Navigation to one point. <laughs> Thank you again to Ambling something for this. Bench on the trail. Christina's been suggesting there's been not a single bench the entire way from Marley Park and <laughs> no benches. I was like, the Wicklow Way is not for slackers. There's a bench. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Look at the state of that now. <laughs> Are you gonna sit on it? 
First bench is not even going to sit on it. We're going into the dark, dark woods. Hopefully there's no evil things lurking in the dark, dark woods. I think we both decided that this is lovely. So the really, really dark section look <laughs> kind of spooky. But I see this lovely wee trail through here. It's really nice. Loads of wee birds. I think they're long tail tits. Another clothing change. <laughs> I've like between hats and tops I've been bouncing all day between loads of different things but what I love like nearly all my clothing options are all in a front mesh pouch of my nature hike bag and I love that big monster pocket on the front and you can see everything in it as well so you can just see what you want just grab it pull it out uh, so good um, it's kind of not the, probably the system for people that like things well organized but it's so great being able to see everything and just reach in, grab whatever you want. And saw this top pretty much at the bottom of the, the pouch. Just right in there, just put it, grabbed it so quick. Thumb loops for the win. Nano, nano. So I think we've basically decided that if we're going to find a spot to camp at down, by, oh, down the river valley, uh, that we will take it because we are wrecked and don't want to like totally busticate ourselves on day one and then be grimacing our way into day two so i think we'll just enjoy um i feel like we've achieved a lot like it's been good um but we don't want to end up just walking miserably for the next whatever length of time so hopefully we're near where the area where we're going to try and camp hopefully i saw somebody taking a massive dump up there getting that phone so this is a sign that points down to the river valley. Actually at the top of the trail here there were signs up saying private property no camping but it does seem that the private property it is the Forestry Commission for Ireland. So and as far as I'm aware now like even on the the new Wicklow Way sign posting or the bigger signs that they have like to say it is permitted in the forestry land and there's only certain areas like in Glendalock Valley where it's expressly forbidden. Um, so as long as you're not on a farmer's land, I think you're okay. So well, I'm hoping to camp here anyway, so. <laughs> yep. This is nice. Look at that. <gasps> Look at the colors. It's quite steep going down here. Oop. Down into the valley, not like my experience in the Glen Shesk Valley. This trail is a whole lot nicer. <laughs> I don't know if these are older signs or there's an exception here, but I think these are older signs. International Youth Hostel Association. Oh, you're entering private land, so I wonder if this is actually the Duke Nockery Hostel. Maybe that's why. Mm. But it is on the Wicklow Way. I'm sure this will not come out in the video, but this is beautiful. Like, it is a dreamscape. Just the quality of light in here. The river, that big, massive boulder. That is gorgeous. <gasps> so we've uh, it's starting to rain now as well, and we've decided we'd, nope, we don't want to go up any more hills. We could walk further, but like if there's more up hills, it's not really enjoyable. But I know I've seen this spot in other people's videos, and I know I've seen all these new camping signs and whatever else. But this is a lovely spot beside the river. It's raining. It's just after eight, so I'm happy to get the shelter up and get food, starving. <laughs> so we got our home up for the night. Pretty pleased, went up pretty quick. I actually put up my um, outer first rig, but actually the rain had eased off enough that it wasn't even worth, just popped it up in our first. Now just to try and get things into the tent without the midges getting in. 
So I haven't actually ever cooked inside a tent before, and I know you're not really meant to do it. But <clears throat> there's lots of ventilation coming in. Um, so yes, obviously you have to take care. <clears throat> not just from flames and the flammability factor, especially using alcohol stoves and that. Um, but even like with a gas stove, if it gets knocked over, it can flare up and set your tent alight. And tents aren't very good with um, that. <laughs> um, but I've got some spiced ginger tea you're going to have. And I've got my couscous and I might add in some of the um, wee protein soy chunks. Maybe into that, just for a bit of extra stuff. So tent life inside the tent, partly because of midges and the rain. Uh, it's not my forte and I don't like sitting on the ground cross-legged. <laughs> it's not the most comfortable position for me. So, uh, but here we are and it's still cosy and quite nice. And, but being disciplined, I uh, have my a Ziploc bag with my camp clothes in it. So, got into the tent, took off my hiked clothes, cleaned up a bit. Got into my camp clothes, so camp socks, um, base layer, top and bottom, basically, and they'll stay sacrosanct as my camp clothes. They, they're not to be sweated in. Um, and then it means tomorrow we can just put on stinky, hikey stuff and hike in the stinky stuff and get it more stinky to do it all again. <laughs> so this seems to be the way of through hiking. <laughs> this is the, the magic. But um, yeah, quite glad to stick to the stick to some guidelines along those things and uh, keeps things right, keeps it good. Yeah, really happy with the space inside the tent. Look, Ooh. what's on your menu? Couscous, olives, tapers, toasted almonds, and pumpkin seeds with a little bit of garlic puree it's like for an, flavor. An Italian stew. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have other stuff that's a wee bit more, um, sounds a bit more appetizing maybe than this what I'm cooking tonight, but I think just being in the tent in the rain and I'm happy just to get something in the meat that's going to be quick and easy. So, and then actually the weather, if I look at the weather and it doesn't seem like it's going to be as bad as I anticipated, <laughs> but I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but I think we might actually have a dry morning. Um, which I'll look forward to, um, having a wee coffee beside this beautiful river. How beautiful is that? Good morning. So, that was your first night in the tent. We had a fair amount, but not heavy. Like it was, sounds heavy in the tent sometimes, but um, not a huge quantity of rain. But um, straight off this morning, as some of the forecasts were saying, wee bits of rain um, here and there, just light rain so far anyway. And I think it's there's going to be rain for about an hour, maybe about nine o'clock or so, and then I think it might actually dry up for the rest of the day. <sighs> this is beautiful. This is beautiful here. Like, it has kind of like Glen, Glen Chess kind of vibes, but the beauty is on another level. Like, the river is just gorgeous. There's fish jumping. It's got that lovely brown peatiness to it. So nice. And yes, there are signs up saying no camping, but I'm justifying it by, I think they're old signs, and that recently it's been accepted that you can't wild camp along the Wicklow Way, but maybe there's loophole or like other elements to that. So. There are no midges are not up. There's something <laughs> are not out in force yet. So basically try and do as much as possible comfortably without midges. 
like get breakfast, have coffee <laughs> before the common attack and make everything a whole different experience altogether. The sun comes out, it is glorious. Well. The city of ferns. We're all head high. Dear itch, I guess Big Elin to the Wicklow Mountains on my channel, aka Sondron. So today, this is where we're at here, down by the river. Um, so we'll be walking, well, further along the river a wee bit, crossing a bridge, tiny road section, and then into Crone Woods. And then that takes us into the deer, um, in the Pars Court area, uh, which is where the very dramatic waterfall is, which was used in, as a backdrop in Vikings. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll be going high, we're not going through Parish Court, it'll be up over, um, which will be good views of the waterfall. And then and then that's the big EBS here's Juice Mountain, um, and that's more exposed, but I'm hoping basically the wind levels are minimal. I think we'll be okay, and I think it's meant to brighten up later, so that's probably the sketchiest part of the Wicklow Way, to be fair. Um, a lot of that's on boardwalks, or bog bridges, as they call it. Um, so yes... That is going to be our morning. And then that will lead us to Loch Tay. And if it's clear, um, and I'm hopeful, we'll get an amazing views over Loch Tay or Guinness Lake or whatever they call it. Again, using Vikings a lot. Um, and also the J.B. Malone statue or memorial is there. So I'll be nice to see the pioneer who started it. Although interestingly the first national way in Ireland was the Ulster Way. <laughs> um, and that J.B. Malone was inspired by that. So yes, we, we don't know where get, we're going to get to, I think, if we do another... Because yesterday we started late and we covered 12 miles, and depending on how much that damaged their bodies, um, we could get... So here's a, one of the huts up here. Brussels Gap Hut. Uh, so potentially if we did another 12 miles, I think we'd end up getting to the Brussels Gap hut, which is probably one of the nicer ones with the nicer views. So we'll see, that could be an option. <laughs> 